Hey guys, well today we're working on the Chevy Love. Now, last year we built it for the zip tie drags. We rushed, we built the truck in nine days, okay? So we were really pushing to get things done and most things did get done properly, except for the doors. Now the doors did not end up with door cards on it. They did not end up with a proper door handle. There was a cable right here with a zip tie loop that I would snatch to open the door. We're gonna do it right now. We got plenty of time for this year. So let's go ahead and get the last few things done. Now, these door handles that I wanna make. So we need to make up the handle and the pivot mechanism and everything to bolt to the door. So let's get to it. The first thing we're gonna start with is one inch inch and a quarter, an inch and a half tubing. We're gonna take these and cut them to size, inch and an eighth, one inch, one inch. As you can see, they fit nicely inside of each other and there's not a ton of slop when they turn. That's what we want. The first thing we're gonna start with is some eighth inch two inch wide flat strap. Now this guy here, I've cut to three and a half inches long. I've gone ahead and sloped off the edge so it'll fit properly onto the door. Now you guys, if you ever notice that your metal has a dark gray look to it, go ahead and wire wheel it, sand it, grind it, whatever you need to do to get it off. This here's mill scale and it'll cause your welds not to bond properly. I don't care how good the wells look, they, sometimes they will not bond right because of this. So simply wire wheel it, like I've done here, and remove the mill scale before you do any welding on it. We're gonna take the one inch tubing and these 3 8 flat washers. We're gonna put them on there. As you notice, it's pretty close already. Now I'm gonna bevel this edge and go ahead and weld this around. And then we're gonna grind it so it's all nice and smooth. Whenever you're going to weld this style washer, there's zinc coating. So you want to make sure you sand off, grind, wire wheel, whatever you got to do to get the zinc coating off because you don't really want to inhale the fumes when you actually weld this. Now before we weld the washer actually to the one inch tubing, what we need to do is take our bolt and a lock nut. Now, now a lock nut is a little different than a normal nut. It tightens on itself as you thread it in. Now it's not a nylock, so there's no plastic in here to melt when we weld it. So what we're gonna do is take it and center it up on the washer and tack it in a few places so it holds tight for us. Now that we're done welding and grinding and surfacing the one inch tubing with the grinder, the nut inside, we make sure that it's gonna fit inside the inch and a quarter smoothly. There you go, and that's gonna turn easily. That's what we want. Now, all this tubing has a seam right here. Now that's where it's put together. Unless you buy DOM tubing. DOM tubing is drawn over mandrel. It does not have that seam. It's way more expensive. This is the common stuff we all have around. So you can just take a reaming bit and knock down that edge so you got a nice smooth deal in there. Okay, now they're going to take the one inch tubing, weld it to our mounting plate, and then we can start assembling the next step. Now, we've taken one of our bolts and two regular nuts and set this washer at three quarters of an inch. Now this fits perfectly inside the inch and a quarter tubing. Now we're gonna use this so when we set it on the workbench, it'll hold the washer directly at the height we want and then we'll go ahead and tack it in. Now that we have the washer welded inside the inch and a quarter tubing, and we've got it at three quarters of an inch offset, we've got our tab here, and then we've cut this out of flat stock also, 
just a simple little design and we'll be able to drill the hole later. We're gonna take this and weld it right to it. I'll lay it flat, lay this flat, and weld it out. And that's gonna be the arm that we're gonna use to connect to the actual lock. Okay, we got our base, our mounting plate, and we've got the inch and a quarter here with the arm to control the lock. One over the other, then we have our bolt that's gonna thread in. Now this is a locking nut, so this is only gonna go in once I want it to and I actually drive it in um, either with a wrench or a socket. Okay, now while these things are cooling, we're gonna go ahead and put the handle on the inch and a half. Now, with this arm here that connects to the rod, and this is our handle. Now, you can take and make the handle look like whatever you want, clean it up. For right now, we're gonna, just gonna leave it. Now, I've cut a notch into the tubing so that when you put it on, it'll actually lock down over the other arm. That way, all the pressure is riding on the tubing. Now, what I'll do is drill a small hole Put a grub screw in, a set screw, that way the handle can't fall off. That's all we're doing. All the strength's gonna be held on the actual notch. The set screw is gonna do nothing but keep the handle on. Okay, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and do the final assembly on it before I even mount it on the door because I want everything together that way I can see what's going on and where to place it on the door. So, between the first piece of tubing and the second one, that's where you're gonna need to apply some grease. That's where you don't want any friction, you wanna be nice and smooth. Everything else, don't worry about. Just that one area, you definitely want some grease in it. Now, when you tighten this, you don't want to completely tighten all the, tighten it and all the way, back it out about an eighth to a quarter. That way it can still move and spin and it'll be fine. Now there's not gonna be anything to catch on here so it'll never unthread. Now I've gotten that tight, moves nice and smooth. We'll put our handle on. And I went and picked up I call them grub screws, they're called socket screws here, set screws, whatever you wanna call them. I got these guys. So what I'm gonna do, and I actually got three eighths. So it should only go through the first one and barely start into the second one. That'll be enough to keep the handle from sliding off. Now that both handles are actually mounted, I ran down to O'Reilly's and picked up the little plastic clips, you know, that always break, the ones that goes in the door, you snap onto the rod to hold the rod. Uh, tailgates, handles, all this stuff. They're all in all cars. So, these here, not bad. Get an assortment for like four bucks. And I stopped by Depot and grabbed some eighth inch rod. Now that's about the same size as what was in the door. So this here, cost me $2.50. So now we're gonna bend it up and make it fit this door and we'll drill the handle to fit the retainer. Well, they're all in and mounted. Simple as that. All right, not too bad, I mean, you can take and put any handle you want on it. It doesn't even look like this. You can be you, make something different on it. But just the basics of how the pieces move, I made all that out of scrap metal that I had here at the shop. So hopefully you guys got something out of it. I think on the next one, maybe we'll build some door panels on this, you know, we'll beat roll some stuff, make this look good before we stick them back on. But 
All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you watching. Do me a favor, like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.